Hello, everybody. Hello, YouTube. Hello, art history enthusiasts and visual culture aficionados. It's me again, Miss M, and I'm back with yet another video. Today, tonight, this afternoon, whenever you're watching any of this, um, I, I finally did it, y'all. I finally, finally, finally did it. Uh, welcome to <laughs> my 15th installment of Understanding the Shining. Okay. Uh, I finally got my screenshots together, finally put them in the PowerPoint presentation, and we're ready to go. This is, um, so I've done, you know, 14 of these so far. This is the last one over here, and it's on my home page. It's it's the it's the video that greets you when you when you arrive at my channel. That's number 14. It'll soon be replaced with number 15 once I'm done with this. Um <clears throat> but this number 15 that I'm doing right now. Uh it's it's a critical one in my opinion. Okay. I I'm sorry I didn't get Tamara up here um to to scream that you know her it's her opinion but i sh i didn't think cuz I, I i wasn't oriented towards that i wasn't you know i wasn't um in that headspace for making jokes today is not a day for jokes y'all today <laughs> is a day for serious business as pa uh, not pai me hatori hanzo would say serious business uh and yes i'll get back to the kill bill uh, videos soon i've just been i've just jumped look at this look at what i've been doing i've for the last month oh my god look at this for about the last month i have gone shining crazy <laughs> and i've loved every second of it i hope you've enjoyed it too um but today we're doing part 15 is the part where wendy walks into the colorado lounge at night while jack is typing and they have their little exchange, their little abusive exchange. So, and I've got a uh, scripts club, script, no, 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 no. L let me do that again. Script slug. Oh, why is that so hard to say? I've got, <laughs> I've got that all queued up to, th to this part of the movie. Okay. Now we, this part is with Danny rolling around in his, uh, tricycle in the hallway in front of room 237 and then after that we get in with with the dialogue which there that's the thing about this movie it is not dialogue heavy but the dialogue between jack and wendy when she walks in and he pulls the paper out of the typewriter and the whole thing right where i as i've been saying in these other videos here you know um everything after well, yeah, everything after 14, I I kind of um, periodically remind you that I cannot tell you what the secret, what the mystery of the um, Colorado Lounge is until I get that part of the uh, movie out the way. And in this video, unfortunately, I do three minute blocks of the movie. And unfortunately, I'm not going to get through that whole scene. I'm going to get to the point where... Uh, Jack tells Wendy to get the fuck out of here, you know, but there's like, a, there's like, or am I? Hold on. No, 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 I'm not. No, I'm not. But I'm going to do like not half, maybe a little more than half, maybe like two thirds of that scene. Cause that's just the way that I've set this up three minute uh, segments of the movie. That's, that's what time will allow me as far as analyzing that part. But it, it it's, it's kind of good. Okay, it's kind of good that I don't get through the whole thing in part 15 and like we pick up with the same scene. We're gonna pick up with the same scene in part 16 because, again, the Colorado Lounge is the key. I'm going to be making um, another kind of ancillary video uh, to this one after this, like probably talking exclusively about the Colorado Lounge. I don't know if I'll reveal the secret, but there's like, there's a couple things going on with that room. Okay. The Colorado Lounge, like Stanley, our Stanley, he makes a point of showing Danny, um, rolling around that part of the hotel. Uh, you know, when, when the family, they get situated in the hotel and Wendy is, uh, carting, 
Jack's breakfast to him. Like we see her carting breakfast to him. She goes through the lobby and then she ends up on their floor in their hallway and outside of their um apartment. And then we cut to Danny just like riding circles and so, like this loop um through the Colorado lounge like on the side where the windows are and then in the hallway behind it behind the stairs and then through that service area and then tur like he just keeps turning left 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 and we see it from like a very short person's point of view okay and not just a short person because he's a child he's four or five years old um a short person sitting down really low down because that tricycle the seat is really low to the ground uh from that point of view a short person may not i don't know like if it's even like if it's he's even like two feet tall when he's sitting down in the tricycle rolling around uh the colorado lounge and that service area in a loop all right stanley did that for a reason our stanley he didn't just put that it seems like a ridiculous little throwaway scene just to kind of sound annoying with the sound of the wheels of his tricycle as they're uh alternating between the bare parquet floors and the carpet and then the parquet floor and then the carpet and then the parquet no 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 it's he he's doing a lot with that one seemingly throwaway scene we're having danny take us on a loop through the colorado lounge okay <clears throat> but we're going to talk about that when we get to that. And once again, let me do my let me do my church announcements. Just get those out the way, all right? Returning viewers, thank you for returning. New viewers, thank you for being new. Subscribers, thank you for subscribing. All 417 of you, I appreciate every single last one of you <clears throat> so much. So so much. Um and you know, if you're watching this video, thank you. Just just freaking thank you for, for being one of my subscribers or being one of my viewers or one of my commenters. I appreciate it like you wouldn't believe. Like you wouldn't believe. So, um, I, I just, I, that, that, that's that. And, and I've been like going through, like when I make one of these videos, like I've already told you, any of them, doesn't matter what subject it is, whether it's The Shining, whether it's Kill Bill, whether it's Eraserhead, whether it's, um, any of the stuff that I do, okay? I do all of it, like I, I think I've explained in prior videos, but I do everything in one take. Yeah, I take breaks, like I'll, 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 I'll switch off the recorder, but, and then when I come back from my break, I just switch it right back on and pick right up where I left off. But I don't edit. This is like, mm -mm, you're, you're getting, you're getting Miss M straight up, unfiltered, uh, straight, what do they call it? Straight no chaser. I'm not going to try and clean this up because the way my crazy brain works, um, I have to do it this way because I don't make any notes. I obviously don't write a script. I don't even have an outline. Nothing. I just start talking. I, I line up my tabs in the videos where I line up tabs or I get my screenshots and my PowerPoint, you know, slides together and I just switch the, switch the recorder on. And I start talking and that's that. But I, I do later listen back to my videos to see whether or not I said anything too stupid, you know? Um, and I mean, I usually don't say anything that I think is too stupid, but you never know. Um, but what I've noticed is like, I, I say things in my videos like, oh, you know, that's an idea that I'm working on. I'm going to have to come back to it. And then I forget about it, which is awful. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to get a notebook and a pen and sit down, you know, while I'm, and I'm going to have to listen back to all of these freaking videos and like pay attention to the spots where I have an idea that I later don't follow up on. And I'm going to have to make notes of that and then like make it because I've got so much to say, people. I've got so much to say about the Colorado Lounge and Wendy and Danny and Jack. Like, I've already kind of, like, done, um, you know, my Stephen King stuff. I don't know if I have very much more to say about that issue. But then again, I'll have to listen back to the video and see whether or not I need to, like, expand on something. I don't know. So stay tuned for that. Like I said, um, and I didn't I say I was going to make a video about the food? 
Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Kill Bill, Shining, Eraserhead, David Lynch. Um, oh, Anne, Anne, hold up, hold up. By the way, community page. I gave you a little homework. Okay, this is uh, this is the one. I've I've been putting my art history uh, playlist tracks up. Number twenty nine was the Payolas, Eyes of a Stranger. One of my favorite songs from the eighties. I'm just an eighties kid, you know. Um, and then this one, Black Lodge, by Anthrax. I love Anthrax. <laughs> I love this song. It is so beautiful. It is so beautiful and dreamy. And this is from, I checked, I checked, I Googled it. And I think it's from 19, early 90s, I think 1992, 93. And I mean, y'all correct me if I'm wrong or, you know, um, give me additional information if I, if I missed something. But to me, it sounds like this song is a reaction or it's just inspired by um david lynch and twin peaks like that that place in the show uh that's called the black lodge like that's a pretty significant part of the show and i'm gonna work on it the video i do after this one is gonna be connected to this song and connected to twin peaks okay and so stay tuned stay tuned my dear shiners uh yeah give this an i don't know if it's escucha or escuchar I really need to know, learn Spanish. I'm going to try and do that this summer or start trying to do that. Um, so it is, yeah, this song, that's your homework. Listen to the song and pay attention to the lyrics and like the, the images or the feelings evoked or conjured by this song. Uh, and it is prep for my upcoming video after this one, after part 15. So I think that's it. Like, I'm going to have to start keeping notes. I'm going to work on some more um, analysis videos for The Shining. going to come back to Kill Bill and finally deal with the House of Blue Leaves. I really want to get into Full Metal Jacket. I really want to get into Eyes Wide Shut, Salvador Dali. And um, thanks to Dr. Luke and Gershom. Yeah, I, there's, you all pointed me in the direction of this Twitter page that puts up pictures, like a lot of behind the scenes photos of The Shining. And I found a couple that I, from the, um, from the Taschen book, the $1,500 Taschen book, uh, f that includes photos of the, the part of the movie, the, the like the epilogue scene that Stanley Kubrick cut out in the hospital with, with Wendy recuperating and whatever. Uh, he has a couple of those on his Twitter. And I asked him in a comment or in a reply, I asked a dude that runs that Twitter account, you know, can I use these in a video? Thank you for putting these up. Can I use them in a video? He didn't reply, but he liked my post. So I'm going to go ahead and take that as a yes and <laughs> and do that. So anyway, you guys. With all of that being said, let's get this freaking show on the road. Here we go with my PowerPoint presentation. All right. Oh, oh, and before we get before we get into that, uh, I got the script. I told you I got the script all queued up. So we're going to see the Grady girls here in this uh, slide presentation. And then we're going to mosey on over to the Colorado Lounge with uh, Wendy and and Jack. All right, so here we are. This is where we left off, I think. Where's the damn thing? Yeah, this is the first out of how many slides? I think I, it's only 141. I usually do like a lot, a little more than that. 150, 160, sometimes 170. Today, just 141, which is interesting. Oh, oh, and Luke Gershom Tankard. I've been working on the number 42. All right. Things just fall into my lap. Ideas, information, what have you, just falls into my lap and I have no control over it. It's just like, I'll be, I'll be working out. I've been working out a lot and I'll be like on my elliptical trainer and listening to my workout playlist. And then I'll just have like this flash of insight about something and I'll be like, oh shit, I gotta make a video about that. Or, um, or whatever and the number 42 okay so with here we are our first slide Danny's looking up at the door double door by the way I don't know if this is the only double door in the hallway but seems like it anyway 
I don't, I, but I don't want to tell a lie. But look at this. 2 times 3 is room 237, okay? 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 7 is 42. And so I, th I don't know if I figured out the 42 thing. But, you know, it's on his shirt when he's looking in the mirror and he's supposed to be brushing his teeth and he has this episode, he's talking to Tony and he passes out. We see the number 42. And then later on in the movie, Wendy on the TV in the, in the, in the lobby on the TV that's not plugged in, she's watching that movie called Summer of 42. So, okay, Stanley wants us to concentrate on the number 42. I think I might have figured out why. That's going to be in an upcoming video. Stay tuned. Okay, so 2 times 3 times 7 is 42. Danny's looking up at this um, door. Okay, and then here he is, right? And yes, you all, yes. Um, this door here, if you go look at my prior video, part 14. Yeah, this door was closed. Now it's open. Hmm. I don't like that. I don't think anybody would like that, but <laughs> you know, that's creepy. Why is, why is Stanley doing that? Why, oh, why is Stanley doing that? I don't know. Um, and this carpeting in this hallway I have, and I'm saving them for a giveaway. I have two just notebooks. They're blank. They're, they're not like huge, but they're, they're adorable. I've got two of them, two different sizes of notebooks inside. It's just blank pages and you can write notes. You can use it as a journal or whatever. And it, but the covers, the outside cover is the same pattern as this carpet on, in the hallway outside of room 237. So yes, I'm going to get around to doing a giveaway eventually. I've been uh, last week busy like hell. This week should be a little less hectic, so let's hope I can do some quality work. Um, but anyway, this this carpeting is meant to be disorienting because these, you know, uh, what are they? One, two, three, four, five, like hexagonal um, shapes. They're they're pointed in different directions. They they're they look like stop signs or. Um, just arrows like this part of it is pointed that way and then the other part of the pattern is pointing in the opposite direction this is meant to be in my opinion in my opinion this is meant to be disorienting this is meant to just make it so that you are you feel like when you're watching this scene you feel like you're not on an even keel you know what i mean it it's it's just a little this this is garish this carpeting, I know it was the late 1970s and this is what people were doing. This, this, this pattern of this carpet, um, it's not out of the ordinary for that time period, but it's just too much. Thank goodness these walls are nice and plain because like if you, if you coupled this with like some, some kind of wallpaper pattern, oh my God, you would go crazy. You would go like slap up the wall crazy. But whatever. So anyway, Danny, he's looking at room 237, right? And he's already, I showed you, you go back and watch again in part 14, but I showed you that he passes by this door, these double doors to the, to the entry into room 237. He already passes by them and he doesn't bat an eye. He doesn't pay attention to them at all. And this second pass, in front of room 237 now he's paying attention like wait wait a minute what changed from that first pass in front of room 230 237 i if i'm not mistaken going in the opposite direction as he's pointed now um he passes by it doesn't even notice it at all and now the second pass going in the other direction oh all of a sudden look at him he's looking at it Okay, and I think the difference between the first pass and the second pass is this door was closed over here in the uh, during the first pass. But that's just my opinion. Like, I scoured this hallway in, um, not literally, obviously, but like, I, I, I went through all of this with a fine-tooth comb, all the turns he makes and whatever. Again, I, I, I said, I think, I think, I'm not sure. I, I think, like, other people have looked at this, this uh, uh, 
loop he does around this area around room 237 and they say oh he starts out on the first floor and he ends up on the second no he don't no he don't he starts on the second floor and he's he's continues to be on the second floor okay so i already did that in part 14. now i think the only the reason that he notices room 237 on this path this second one is something to do with this door you're meant to notice that it was closed a minute ago and now here it is open okay i and whatever it is whatever force whatever thing whatever entity whatever you want to call it that is responsible for opening this door is the reason that he's his attention is drawn to the forbidden forbidden room room 237 2 times 3 times 7 equals 42 okay so here he is oh 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 shit he's getting up he's getting up off of his tricycle and again he's wearing wendy's colors i cannot deny that i cannot um oh i cannot this this is i am what if you're if you're uh familiar with british sitcoms like from the 60s 70s 80s whatever if you remember that show that was called are you being served and there was a character um you know a, a sales lady in the show her name was mrs slocum and like she would say and i am unanimous in that and i'm not even going to try to do molly sugden's the lady who plays her molly sugden's voice no 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 but she was awesome i i am unanimous in this these are wendy's colors the tricycle is wendy's colors it's even got a little red bell and this front part of it down here that's hard to see is red too and here's wendy not wendy or maybe shit how do we know um this is danny blue overalls and what brand of overalls denim overalls is he wearing lee i don't know if that's significant uh in any way in any way shape or form whatsoever lee and yes lee is like a branch of the levi strauss company because i've been shopping for clothes lately and i got like i think i got a pair of jeans or something that are lee brand but whatever okay so levi strauss and he has like his um the history behind levi strauss and the jeans that bear his name to this day levi's um these were made during the gold rush <laughs> I, that's what it was taught that's how it was taught to me in school like way back in the day uh, they taught us in school that levi strauss he made denim pants and de denim overalls and whatever for these workers uh working you know panning for gold or digging for gold or just like heavy hard labor jobs like putting together railroads and whatever um and they used to wear cloth pants just ordinary cloth pants and those things would just fall apart after the wear and tear of of a of a laborer's physical laborer's job so here comes levi strauss and he says well i'll make pants out of denim they last a lot longer and that's like where he got his start in um you know in the 19th century and here's danny wearing these denim overalls and you can see this little that's why i'm circling this this little tag on the on his back it says lee okay so it's, maybe it's lee instead of levi's because it's children's clothing yeah that when i see that when i saw this outfit of his like the first thing i thought of was like oh osh gosh bagosh right that brand for children's clothing way back in the day and then I said, well, wait a minute, let me see if I can see the brand of the clothes. Yeah, Lee. Lee Denim. And okay, so that's his blue denim overalls, right? And then he's got this red sweater underneath the blue overalls. And then he's got this blue and white plaid uh, shirt with a collar under the red sweater. And then his shoes, he's wearing little like uh, Chuck's, Conver Chuck Taylor uh, Converse shoes. They're also red like police don't tell me that stanley didn't color code the 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 wardrobe for this movie anyway so he's wearing wendy's colors blue and i'll say blue and red like specifically right blue on the outside of the the shell is blue and the and underneath is red we've seen wendy like that a couple of times so we're gonna see her looking like that again in this upcoming colorado lounge um argument or not really argument but just abusive scene right so he's getting up he's looking around look at him look at him he's turning his head to like he doesn't say anything 
no dialogue, no monologue, no nothing um, in this scene. But he's looking like, I don't know why he's looking. Is he looking to make sure that nobody's there? Is he looking because he hopes that somebody is there? Is he scared? Is he just, does he know he's about to be naughty? And, you know, he's he's disobeying what uh, Halloran told him. Don't go in there. Stay out. I told you, stay out. All right, we'll see. But he's looking around. So that suggests that he knows that what he's about to do is not okay. So, okay, he looks to the right. He looks to the left, right? And there he is approaching uh, room 237. And what I also want to say before we get to the doorknob, um, the lighting in this hallway, on these in these adjacent halls, in the, in the like, what do you call it, mezzanine or landing or whatever, um, in this part, like above and overlooking the Colorado Lounge, um, in that part of the hallway, we have the crown like candle crown chandeliers but in this part of the hallway it's just these like things that are stuck to the ceiling i don't know i don't know what to think about that but whatever it's very harsh light so here here he is approaching i told you this is outfit right he looks like a little prospector i don't know what you all think but here we go right and he's coming up to the door right looking up he's looking up at it he's not looking at the doorknob no he's looking up up he's looking at the number on the door okay room 237 he's like yeah this is the one and then yeah he's um now he's reaching out for the doorknob okay reaching out for the door grabs the doorknob tries to turn the doorknob okay it's locked oh dread it's locked all right and he tries and it doesn't work. Okay, he gives up after the first try. All right. And now he's looking up at it again. Looking up at it again. And then, boom. Them two. Ugh. And they're wearing Wendy's colors, too. All right. These two. The, 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 they're usually referred to as the Grady twins. I don't know why, but they are. Okay, I guess for convenience. And they're wearing Wendy's colors. They're wearing Wendy's colors. They're wearing um, these little, like, light blue dresses. And their sash of the dress is pink, which is just a lighter version of the color red. All right? And they each have this, like, I don't know what to call this hairdo, but it's boring. Um, and they're surrounded by blue. I don't know what they call these. Are these cotton flowers or corn flowers or whatever on the uh, wallpaper? Okay, and they have um, the moldings on the wall is a beige color, and then the window behind them with the, the kind of translucent curtain, uh, the frame of the window is also a beige color, and again, reminiscent of Greek columns. All right, and then we have this over here to the right. You can see the bottom uh, bottom left corner of it. It seems to me like kind of, is this like an emergency thing where there's a fire extinguisher in there, like in case of fire break glass or whatever? Is that what this is? I don't know. But we'll see when we see that other scene where he's in the, you know, in this part of the hotel and he sees the twins again. So this is the, what, second or third time? that This is the second time in the hotel that he's had a vision or it's very strongly implied in this scene that he's having a vision of these twins. The first time he saw the twins in the hotel was in the games room. Okay, remember, later on in the movie they tell him, come play with us. So it's very appropriate that the first time he sees them when he's at the hotel is in the games room. That's what you do in the games room, you play. Okay, so anyway, so we see them. Again, are these two sides of Wendy's personality? Are these two girls, and what I was talking with Gershom lately on Slack, is this uh, a nod to Alice, Alice in Wonderland? I don't know, Gershom, if you're listening. I don't know. Um, it might be, 
because Alice from Alice in Wonderland has a very similar outfit as these two little girls. However, Wendy Darling from Peter Pan, she also, I think she wears bl uh, light blue as well. I'll have to, I, I'll have to look it up. I don't have time to look it up right now because I'm concentrating on getting this part 15 done, but it could be either way. You know, maybe these two little girls are reminiscent of Alice, uh, but maybe it's also Wendy, like two, um, two Wendy darlings, because like Wendy is a brunette and Alice is a blonde. So I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what you think, Gershon. Um, but there they are. He sees like this flash of a vision of them. Um, and then here he is again, looking up at the number. He's fixated on this number. He's like obsessed with the number on the door. It seems that way anyway. What else could be he looking? Could he be looking up at, other than the number room two thirty, uh, room two thirty seven? Like I said, two times three times seven equals forty two. Okay. Um, and some people are like, you know what? Let me no, forget it. Let me let me not let me not say that. I'll save it for the next video. You're just gonna have to come back. Okay. You're just going to have to come back to see what I have to say about 237 and the number 42. Probably not anything that anybody said, said before. If they've said it before, okay, but I doubt it. Um, so anyway, he's like, you know, he's looking at this door kind of like it's in, a, in an adversarial way. He looks like kind of mad. He looks, the, he, he, I don't know what to call it, like little boys they're already training to become men. So they already have that like aggressive thing about them. And he seems to be regarding this door and whatever this might mean to him in that way. He seems like he seems to be mad at this door. Is he mad because he can't get in there or like what's going on? I'm not sure. But as you can see, there's absolutely no words or if you've watched the movie, you definitely know. There's no words in this part of the movie. It's just him riding around this part of the hotel uh, in this area around room 237. He stops in front of room 237, gets up off of his tricycle, goes to try to open the door. It's locked. He can't open it. And he like, tries to stare the door. It looks to me like he's mad dog in this door. right? He's trying to get staring it down. And the door won't budge because... There's no key. He doesn't have a key. Okay. Cool. And he's pissed. He's definitely pissed. And then he goes back to his tricycle. Right? Um, and he, 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 he gives it like, you know, another look. Like, you know, I'll, I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back. Yeah. He <laughs> gets on the tricycle. Yeah. Look how low to the ground this thing is. My goodness. And then... He's still like staring. He's staring down the door. In my opinion, this, this, this look on his face is an aggressive one. It's like a, what do I call it? A combative sort of look. He, he wants to fight that door. Right? And he's, the door has won for now. For now. Um, but he's gonna be back. Right? He, like, what is it? Is it Douglas MacArthur? I shall return. So he, um, he gets on his tricycle and to like get the tricycle moving, he actually moves this back wheel with his hand to get the thing rolling. So, and then he gets going, um, down the hallway, pedaling away from room 237. And he looks, he, you know, as he was getting over to sit down, back down on the tricycle, he looked angry. And now he looks defeated. Look, he, he hangs his head. Um, and he looks downward. Like, he looks like he's disappointed. Like, he, for whatever reason, he's just mad that he couldn't get into that room. And he, he feels like he's been foiled in some way. I don't know. I don't know. But, like, yeah, he, he's, People say, oh, he looks dejected. To me, no, he doesn't look dejected in this scene. He looks defeated. Defeated and angry about being defeated. But y'all let me know. Y'all let me know in the comments. And again, so here's this door that was closed. Now it's open. Uh, ashtray, ashtray, and 
yet another ashtray. I don't know. There's the laundry uh, cart back here. What the hell is that doing there? There shouldn't be no laundry in this part of the hotel or any part of the hotel. There's no guests. Nobody's getting sheets dirty. Like, what is there to wash? Why is that? That's gross. Just put it down in the laundry room. Shit. Um, and then there's this over here, right? Like, oh, Stanley. Stanley, Stanley, Stanley. I just noticed this. Not this, but something else. I will, I will motion towards it for you. I will not explain it because I'll be talking about that in my next video, in my next analysis video. But anyway, this what I'm looking at, this, this here, uh, is that another like in case of fire break glass kind of thing? I don't know. I need to maybe check on that if I have the time and if I remember to do it. But that's not what caught my eye and made me say Stanley, Stanley, Stanley. Um, this up here. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about yeah, that up there. I won't say what it is. You can see. I hope you can. Um, but even if you can or can't, I will talk about it later. I will let you know. Next video. Next video. You got to come back. But, ooh, Stanley, you sneaky, sneaky man. And I love him for it. I love him for it so much. I love sneaky geniuses. I love it. Um, so anyway, da Danny has a showdown with the doors of room 237 and he loses. And he, he pedals away uh, in his tricycle, defeated and, and angry. Okay, cool. So that's that. That's the end of that scene. All right. And here we go with this. Okay. This is the very first shot of this in my opinion, iconic scene. All right. Absolutely iconic um, scene. And the, I'll show you the first shot of this that I'm going to show you today. And and the last shot, you know, the last shot of the scene is like Jack type again. again but today, for my purposes, this is the last shot today. So this is what we're going to cover up until this frame of the um movie okay uh there's a lot going on here it doesn't last very long and like i said i'm not covering the whole thing maybe like oh, i don't know two-thirds or three-fifths of the scene in today's slide presentation but that's enough and we're gonna finish it next time in part 16 that's enough we, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. First, coffee break. I got laundry in the machine and I got dishes in the dishwasher. And, <laughs> and, and so on and so forth. Oh, but I'll be right back after I have my little, little coffee. And we will get into this freaking room. Oh, I'm, I'm tempted to put up the Fugazi song again. If you're if you're into like '80s punk music, uh, Fugazi waiting room. I think it's somewhere on my community tab anyway. Maybe I'll find it for you. So if you wanna if you wanna listen to it, um, that that and the Anthrax song Black Lodge. Oh, heavens to bits. Okay, I'll be right back. Hold on, you guys. Ooh, okay, I'm back. It was quite a break. I had a bunch of stuff to do, but. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. And this is our first shot of the Colorado Lounge. Okay. So here we are. Okay. Here we are in the Colorado Lounge, entering the Colorado Lounge um, from the same. This is interesting. This is interesting. From the same um, direction that. Uh, Jack and Wendy and Ullman and Watson are entering it when they do their uh, walkthrough, when they do their tour of the hotel on closing day. This is, I just realized this. But also, <clears throat> once again, this movie is called The Shining. Okay? Light is very important. Look at the light in this, the, the way he, uh, Stanley, lit this room. All of these sconces are lit. Um, but both out here, 
um, and then inside on the walls of the Colorado Lounge, and then in the back here on this, again, what is this, uh, landing, mezzanine, I don't know what to call it, up here, down here, okay, everything but these, what is it, one, two, is it a third also, Shan this big crown, remember, tagging, chandeliers, um, and that's going to become important soon tagging or tags as I explained in that one video is going to become important soon uh, Stanley's going to remind us of that so we're walking in right we're getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to the entrance and you see the floors too so whatever lights you see on the walls, these, well, I call them sconces, these candle sconces. And again, all of these are candles, right? So the um, light bulbs on the chandeliers, they're meant to mimic candles, fake candles, electric candles, but candles. Same thing on the walls here. Okay, so if there's something going on with these candles. I don't know what it is, but... You know, he could have chosen, the, the, the design people could have chosen um, it, something different on the walls as opposed to the ceilings. It didn't have to match, but they, but they match. I don't know why. So we, we're zooming in on um, approaching Jack from behind. All right. And we're, we're coming in, coming in, coming in. And this is, and this lamp y'all where's the where's the cord where is the cord that they didn't have cordless lamps in the late 1970s they didn't have them in the 1980s as far as i know i never saw one um <clears throat> but whatever um <clears throat> excuse me i i had a little snack so <laughs> i'm clearing my throat i had a little ice cream for those of you who are in southern california thrifty ice cream Mm -mm. it's still good it's by the way i think thrifty ice cream i think they they started in 1942 which is interesting Ooh, the synchronicities but so here we are okay jack's typing away typing away at this table i mean i don't know if this table is like officially a desk um but he's using it as such and again the lamp that's not plugged in all the all the rugs in this room i think they are as they should be like according to the camera walk the tour of the hotel um you know the these indian native american uh, uh pattern or design rugs on the floor um there's i think the bear rug is in front of the fireplace and again like i said in my opinion every time we see a bear in this movie it's wendy that's my opinion stanley has connected her to winnie the pooh winnie the pooh is a bear okay so the bear rug i think also uh represents wendy's presence uh, in some way all right so we uh, excuse me here we go from we go from this to this all right here he is typing away typing away and then behind him we see one of the elevators and then the dials above the elevators they do look very reminiscent of eyes that are you know again surveilling him somehow um and here he is typing away in his green shirt in this i think the typewriter is black in this so the only time the typewriter is that beige or off-white color is the scene where he's bouncing the tennis ball off the walls and then after every scene after that it's black either black or like that charcoal like dark 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 gray color so <clears throat> we have that and we have this piece of paper that at least as it's lit in this scene it looks yellow i told you the movie is color-coded yellow um and I associate the color yellow in this movie with Wendy's feet. She seems to always be wearing, maybe not always, but often, she her feet are clad in some kind of yellow footwear, whether it's moccasins or like Ugg boots or something like that. But that might not be the case, but the paper is yellow. Okay, and he's typing away. Yeah, the, the thing is moving as he types on the typewriter. 
the Adler typewriter. Yes, Adler means eagle. There's an eagle uh, symbol on the typewriter that you can see in other scenes and other shots of the typewriter. And he's typing intently. Intently. All right. And whatever he's working on, he's working on it, you know, with, with some sort of, I don't know what to call it, urgency. There it seems that way. Okay, so again, Jack Nicholson's face is very unique. Those eyebrows, nobody has them. <laughs> nobody has eyebrows like Jack Nicholson's eyebrows. They just don't. And there's a lady. I should maybe put it up in the community tab if I can find it. There's a lady on TikTok who does face reading, like um, how to determine somebody's personality or their character or whatever based on their facial features. She did one for Jack Nicholson. Oh my God, let me, I'll, I'll find, I'll try to find that for you and post the link in the community tab if I don't forget. Um, and if I forget, then I'll remember again. So don't worry about it. Anyway, so here we are in the Colorado lounge. Um, Jack's in his green shirt, typing away on the, on the black typewriter with the eagle on it and this yellow piece of paper. Okay, cool. In this room that is indirectly lit. This is not direct light. None of this is direct light. Again, light is extremely important. This movie is called The Shining. All right. And we have this buffalo head over here. That goes back to the very, very ancient world. Um, and when I say ancient, I mean prehistoric, like bison, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know. And then we have these, you know, Native American... Um, paintings or designs above this fireplace fire th there's no fire in the fireplace so there is no natural source of light here fire is a natural source of light like i said fire or the sun are natural sources of light and maybe even like a lightning something like that but we don't we don't have any of that here this is all light bulbs this is all electricity all right so we have this um again this lamp no cord and even if there's a cord, where would it be plugged in? There's no socket anywhere near this table. Like, what's going on? And this lamp is here in this nighttime scene, but it's not here in the daytime. So make of that what you will. So we have this, um, yeah, there's three of them, three of these chandeliers and these indirect lights, right? Why indirect light? Indirect light. <sighs> It it almost makes me think, if you've been watching my, my recent videos, it almost makes me think that Stanley is like taking yet another dig at Stephen King with the, in, with the indirect light, meaning, you know, light symbolizes knowledge. And if I'm right, and in my opinion, Stephen King didn't write this book or he only you know, his participation in the writing of this book was just like scant. Um, and maybe even his wife, Tabitha, is the real author of like Carrie and maybe even this too. Oh boy. Oh my goodness. <sighs> so many things to think about. Like I said, I'm going to have to get a notebook and just start making notes because it's getting scrambled as hell in my head. Again, no fire in the, in the fireplace, no fire in the fireplace. Um, which is interesting. It, no fire. And the, like I said, he's using candles, candles, real ones. You light them and they, it's fire. It's a tiny little fire. It's just the candle light, but it's fire. And that is, yes, a source of natural light, something burning, something, something producing a flame. <sighs> so many things to think about. And again, the floor is very highly polished and it reflects light, but it's not just reflecting light, it's reflecting artificial light. Like I said, light symbolizes knowledge. So <clears throat> we're getting close. Oh, there she is. Look, we went from here to here. There's Wendy. She's, 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 she has appeared. And again, all of these um, rugs and everything are where they're supposed to be. Um, but the couch, sofa, whatever you want to call it, that was in front of this long table that he's using as a desk. I can't see it. 
I can't see any signs of it. That couch is kind of important because it just disappears with no explanation whatsoever. Also, this piano in the background doesn't, in the videos that I've watched and articles that I've read in the past, this piano here at the base of these stairs um, doesn't hardly ever get any attention. Like, none really that I remember. Um, like, why? Why? But the piano always has like this newspaper on top of it throughout the movie whenever you see this piano there's always this like newspaper on it and i'm like where's that newspaper from the paper boy is not stopping by here they're closed like they shouldn't i don't know maybe they are getting paper delivered i don't know also these potted plants that are pretty obviously fake because like they never die and they never grow throughout the movie so like what's up with them um anything else I think that's it for now. Okay, so Wendy has shown up here. All right. And she's coming. She's wearing, you know, she's wearing the top part, her, her dress or smock or whatever you want to call this article of clothing she's wearing. It's blue. And then she's wearing red, what look like red, like rain boots, which... Why the hell would you wear rain boots indoors? I don't understand it. Has she been outside? And even if she has been outside, like, wouldn't she take those off and get some other footwear for inside? I don't know. I don't know. Because I live in Los Angeles, California. Yeah, it rained a lot this year. That's all over now. There's no rain. But, you know, I don't know the etiquette regarding, um, you know, winter footwear. Because we don't have it here. People wear boots in in L.A. simply for fashion reasons. Not because it's cold. It's never, like, hardly ever. I mean, hardly ever cold enough down here in L.A. for anybody to wear boots or, like, an actual real honest-to-goodness coat or a scarf or, you know, something warm on their head to protect their ears or anything like that. No, just, like, no. Um, and rain boots... Yeah, I guess they're they're a good thing to have when it rains, but in most years it rains so infrequently that we we really don't really we we don't need them. Sneakers will do just fine, um, and you just wipe your feet a little and and because your feet are not gonna get dirty, because we don't walk. No, the song is still true. Nobody walks in L.A. Hardly anybody, and we definitely there there's definitely nothing's gonna get your feet dirty, even if you do walk in L.A. The sidewalks are for the most part pretty clean like outside the hood um so yeah we don't have any need for wearing boots none whatsoever so here she comes okay here she comes she's getting closer and closer and closer and closer oh good lord and then oh and she's getting closer and closer and i think this is the point here at this point in the um in this scene where she finally announces herself she says something like hi hun and then he very abruptly and i'll show it to you because i i these screenshots in this scene were very hard to get because things happen so quickly that like in in a split second the thing that i want to take a screenshot of is like over so she gets closer and closer and closer okay and then finally yeah, and you can see her, her footwear a little better now. Um, and then finally, as she gets to the desk, then, then he pulls out the paper. Look at this. Yeah, I mean, he must have seen her coming. Why did he wait until the very last second to pull that paper out of the typewriter? That I don't understand. Like, he can, I don't know if he's, if maybe he couldn't see her when she was like, Oh, Lord, when she was, like, all the way over here, like this, okay? But after, like, a certain number of steps, he must have been at least somehow aware of her presence. And, like, like I said, when she gets to about here, she says, Hi, Han, and then he, that still doesn't prompt him. Hi, Han, at this point, doesn't, still doesn't prompt him to pull the paper from the typewriter. She has to get this close for him to pull the paper out of the typewriter, which I just find odd. 
very odd. Okay. Um, he could have done it sooner if he's trying to hide something. You know what I mean? But anyway, here she is. She says, hi, hun. And he pulled out the paper and then she bends over to kiss him on, I think, the cheek. I don't know. Um, and like if Wendy, in my opinion, once again, if she represents Stephen King's wife, Tabitha, and she's really the author of all of this, or she like played a much bigger role in the writing of his novels than even he did. Oh boy. Okay. <clears throat> so, excuse me. Um, here she is. She's a Wendy has arrived and she, oh Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Now, take a good look at this. Take a very, very good look at this. This looks like nothing. This looks like nothing at all that you should be concerned about. Um, you know? This looks like a whatever kind of thing. Those of us who've watched this movie and watched analysis or read analysis about this movie, we know that there's so much more than meets the eye here in this one frame or in these frames that frame um, these, sh these, these shots in the scene that frame Jack sitting in this chair behind his typewriter at this table with the scrapbook and the lamp and this gla glass with the pencils in it and then these ch this chair and table set up behind him. Okay. Um, again, I'm not really going to explain what I think it means, but I'm pointing, I'm, I'm drawing your attention to this chair behind him against the wall and then this little table thing next to the chair. All right. I don't know what that thing is. Is it an end table? Is it a coffee table? Whatever, but it's there. Okay. Um, he looks, look at his face. Look at Jack's face. He looks annoyed. He looks annoyed. He's even, like, it seems to me anyway. You all let me know in the comments whether or not you agree. He seems to be leaning away from her. His body language says, like, I don't want you here. Um, you're bothering me. I don't, you know, she, she's an unwelcome presence. And she, he's leaning away from her. All right. And then here's the um, next frame okay and i will read the um the the script to you or for you when i'm done going through these slides okay and this is going to be intense by the way this is an intense scene like when he when he tells her off when jack tells wendy off in this scene like i could feel that i could feel that in my heart like he's telling me off i don't know why but um so he's annoyed he's obviously annoyed but he's still being, I suppose, polite. Yeah? And please pay attention. Again, this chair and table combo up against the wall. Um, interesting. Just freaking interesting. Okay, here's one more. And this is her blue uh, dress you could see here. And again, pay attention to this scrapbook. And pay attention to where this, I don't know what this thing is called, on the part of the typewriter that moves back and forth, left to right. But pay attention to the position and exactly where it is here. Now that he's, you know, stopped typing and he pulled the paper out of it. All right. And here's Wendy. And again, here's her, the, you know, her, her dress, whatever you want to call it, is blue. And then her head Okay, her cranium is framed by these curtains behind her, and the curtains are plaid. All right, they're plaid. And, like, the, the curtains are there to cover the window, but they're, they don't seem to be covering the window, really. And then there's this odd light coming from this window behind her. And I have to, I mean, I don't remember. I have to look at other, maybe, maybe I should just look here. Hold on. No, I can't see it here. But, um, her head is framed by these curtains. The curtains are plaid. The same, and, and at least it looks to me, the exact same color and pattern of plaid that we see in those chairs that are outside the bleeding ele elevator. 
And like I said in the other video, I need to like do some research about plaid. Ugh. Heaven help me. But again, this weird light is coming from behind her. And if we're being led to believe that this is a nighttime scene, there's no daylight streaming through these windows. So, like, why does this window that's framed by these curtains, that's a background for her head, why does it look like some kind of light is coming through it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Here she is with those teeth. Oh, my God. And um, she's asking him if he's gotten very much written today. And he says, oh, um, I think he says something like, I, I, I don't know what he says. I have to look at the script. But again, remember the chair and table? They are gone. Okay, they were there a second ago. And again, pay close attention to the scrapbook and these newspaper clippings that are pasted to the pages of these of this scrapbook. They're going to change. I'm just, that's a spoiler. They're going to change. They're not going to, it's not the same. It's not going to be the same newspaper clippings and the same shapes later on when we see the scrapbook again. And I don't think anybody touched it, but whatever. So anyway, behind him, the chair that was here and the little table that was here are missing. And there's nothing on this wall anymore. And there should be. Okay, so he's, you know, reacting to whatever she's asking him. And again, he's being polite, but again, in a way that only Jack Nicholson can be condescending. And I think this is the one where she says, oh, the weather report said it's going to snow today or tonight or whatever, you know. And then <clears throat> um, I think he says, and what do you want me to do about it? Oh, God. Here, okay. The table and chair are back. Okay. So let's just, let me just show you that. Okay. Gone. No, actually, let me show you this. This. Okay. To this. Okay. And then to this. <laughs> wow. And now that I'm actually doing this, why the hell not? Let me compare the chair, like, before and after. So... Where is it? Okay, so this 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 um, post on the chair that's closest to us, the viewer. Here it is, and it's directly under this sconce. Let me see if it lines up like that. In oh wait, hold on. Why do I do this to myself? Oh my God, it's exactly the same. You, so what they probably did was they filmed, they probably filmed this scene all the way through with the chair and the table and without the chair and the table. So, okay. Um, so he's, you know, she's, t she's um, telling him how it's going to snow. And he's like, what do you want me to do about it? And now he's like, L you know, you're bothering me when I'm writing. You're breaking my whatever. Okay. And look, he's smiling. He's smiling. He's, he seems like in this body language and this facial expression, he seems like he's trying not to piss her off. I don't know. What do you guys think? Or is that just me? I'll go, I'll run through it again. So we have this and I think she's asking, um, you know, if, if she can come back later and read whatever it is that he's written. And he's like, oh, look, he's trying to explain to her something smiling, trying not to piss her off. And then this facial expression and this body language here, to me, is very similar to the body language that Danny exhibited when he was rolling away from room 237. Not very, not necessarily angry. Yes, annoyed. He's annoyed here. But he's also like feeling defeated. Like he can't really talk to her. He can't really just tell her like what he really thinks, at least at this point in the scene. And then in this part, she's like, oh, okay. Um, like, you know, you just keep writing and I'll uh, come back later with a couple of sandwiches and maybe you can let me read whatever you've written. Okay. And then this. This is where Jack Nicholson really becomes Jack Nicholson. And before I get to that, hold on.
Hold on. I know I'm jumping around everywhere. This is where he's still being polite. Okay. I said that the tagging, and I, as I explained in the in the video about um, diamonds and crowns, tagging. From my research, it means crown. So there are seven letters in the Hebrew alphabet that, whenever they appear in the Torah scroll, are decorated uh, with three tagging. Okay, look at the back of this chair or behind his head, his chair. This like flower design, I'll call it that. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll call them petals. Okay? Seven petal. Not an even number. No, an odd number. Seven, but seven exactly. I don't know. What do you all think? Um I think what is it? Zayin is the seventh letter of the alphabet. Zayin is one of the seven letters of the Hebrew alphabet that when they're written in the Torah scroll always have three tagin. So that tells me they're very special letters. I don't know. Y'all let me know. Y'all let me know. Why seven? Why exactly seven? <sighs> I, I always think that I'm losing my mind. Anyway, let me get back to this. So now, oh, now he's pissed. Now he's really, really irritated, really annoyed, and he has this, like, absolutely, absolutely disgusted, just disgusted look on his face when she says, I'll, I'll come back with a couple of sandwiches later, and then maybe you can let me, let me read what you wrote. And he's like, oh, oh, no, oh, look at this, look at this, ooh, ooh, look at that face. He just, he, he has this look on his face, like he just wants to spit at her. Ew. Ay, ay, ay. And now he's like winding it up. He's about to tell her how he really feels. Okay, so he's, you know, he's looking underneath his eyebrows. He's getting ready. He's telling her, like, you know, how he's, he, when she walks in there, he, she, she's bothering him and whatever. Look, oh, look at this. Ooh. Ooh, look. only, only Jack Nicholson can do this with his face. Nobody else. Look at this absolutely, like this face is just dripping with condes condescension and disdain for the Wendy character. My God. He's, he's really getting into it. I just wonder how long it took him to rehearse this. Look at the eyebrows. Oh, the eyebrows are out of control. You know, Oh my God, my God. Oh, here he is again. Ooh, Lord. I'm just going to go through this. And we just appreciate uh, Jack Nicholson's facial expressions in this. <laughs> in this. Oh, here he goes. He, he's going to slap himself on the head. Look. Ooh. See, it took me a couple of tries to get that screenshot. So you're welcome. Okay. <laughs> and, ooh, oh no, he's showing this, those teeth of his. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. And again, like I said, seven of these petals behind him. Um, do these petals, you know, I'm just noticing they have the, these caps at the end of these petals. Does that make them look kind of like phallic symbols? Y'all let me know. But he's just slapped himself in the head. And don't forget, this is the room where he's going to get brained by Wendy with the Louisville Slugger. So... Kapuya. Right? Look at that. Look at that. Ooh, those teeth. He's showing, he's literally, literally showing his teeth. He's angry. He's very angry. He's telling her, you know, when you come in here and you, you distract me and I have to start all over again, now he's tearing up the paper. Now he's just, you know, ooh, Lord. Can you imagine having to deal with somebody like this? Can you just imagine? I've shown this movie to people, and when when we've watched this scene as a group, um, I say, you know, after this scene, I say, you know, I pause the movie, and I say, so, like, if you were Wendy, and he talked to you like this, what would you do? How would you react? And the people say, like, especially the women, they would they would say, oh, 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 no, I would take that typewriter and I would just bust him upside the head with it. Or, you know, if he talked to me that way, he wouldn't have any fingers left to type with. Like, <laughs> 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 
And they're right. This deserves some kind of like counterpunch. Maybe not literally, but like I would tell him off. Oh, I, I, I would give I would give as good as I get. I sure would. Um, but not Wendy. As you can see, this, you know, he's he's done ranting at her. And this this seems to surprise her and startle her. She seems like shook by his behavior and he, and what he says to her. Now, her confusion and her like fear and or shock or whatever you want to call this, you know, her reaction to this. She looks surprised. I'll go through it again. Her facial expression like this is her before he goes on his little rant and there's like several screenshots of his rant this is her before the rant okay and this is her after the rant look at the difference i'll do it again i'll do it again i have to scroll up quite a bit because of all the shots of him being an asshole but okay this is smiling she's prepared to make him some sandwiches you know and then that's before And after. Oh my goodness. She's surprised by his behavior. Oh, and my question, me, Miss M, my question is why? Why is she surprised? She's talking to a man who, as she herself explained to the doctor woman, came home and dislocated their like three or four year old child's shoulder in a fit of rage just because the kid got into his papers dislocated his shoulder injured his arm whatever she, the story changes but like she has been living with a man who is capable of that and she knows if the story is true if the story is true, might not be, and I don't mean in the book, I mean in the movie. Forget the book. Uh, in, in the movie, Wendy tells the doctor, and therefore the audience, that Jack dislocated a three-year-old's, or, you know, at the most, a four-year-old's shoulder. That's a serious injury. That's a serious fit of rage. And it's probably, like, not the only time he's acted crazy or evil or whatever and like i said in the book the reason why they run away from vermont is because he almost beat a student to death so this man has like anger issues rage is issues whether you're looking at the movie or the book this man has serious anger issues that should not let me do it again let me do it again this is before the rant, and this is after the rant. His rage and his anger issues should not be a surprise to her. At this point in the relationship, if she's been with him as long as she's been with him, or, you know, for, I suppose for, or I assume as long as Danny's been alive, five years, five years, that's enough time to get to know a person. Especially if he dislocates children's shoulders and, and beats teenagers like half to death. Um, he's probably been abusive towards her too. This shouldn't surprise her. She should have anticipated this. I'm not saying his behavior is okay. Of course not. But, you know, she's chosen to stay with him. Yeah. And she should be prepared for this. She should, because that's what abused people do. That's what abused both men and women when they're dealing with uh, a partner, a spouse, or even a parent or a friend or, or whoever that has a history of being abusive. Like they, that person who is on the receiving end of the abuse, they learn what to say and what not to say. They learn how to act and how not to act. They learn what to do and what not to do. They learn what that abusive person's triggers are, and they learn how to avoid them. 
for the most part. That abusive person, like whatever, you know, whatever reason they're abusive, there's so many different reasons, so many different diagnoses, like narcissistic personality disorder, um, antisocial, bipolar, like all kinds of things, all kinds of things um, that could contribute. Not necess not always, but could could possibly contribute or be a factor in that abusive person's abusive behavior. But it never it doesn't matter. Their partner, their spouse, in this case Wendy, um is used to it or is constantly living in fear of it, and that fear causes them to be very mindful of what they say and how they behave because they don't want another episode to happen. They don't want another, um, you know, they don't want to be abused again. And yeah, the abusive person, like, if they're abusive, they're going to find a reason to be abusive. Like, it doesn't take much. But I'm still shocked that she's shocked. I'm surprised at her being surprised. At, or this, like, she seems like she, this face looks like she's, like, never dealt with this before. Like, this is new. This her this this behavior of his like where is it ooh where is it where is it I'm looking for a good shot of him being crazy like like this is new to her I don't think so I really don't I really don't think that she's never um, dealt with this before okay and here it looks like oh no she's this is like she's she looks like she's gotten the shock of her life. No, you witnessed him, Wendy. You witnessed him dislocating Danny's shoulder. <laughs> this should not be a surprise to you. Okay? And there, the last shot of my three-minute segment for this video is this here. He's still pissed. He's still pissed. He's still terribly pissed. Um... You know, let me go to, you know, th this is my last slide. Uh, let me go to this here. Okay, so this is Danny in front of room 237, the two Grady girls. And they're called that, see? They're called that in the script, the two Grady girls holding hands. Okay, Danny looking up at number on door. I knew, I didn't read this yet, but I knew he was looking up at the number. What else could he be looking at? So then we transition over into the Colorado Lounge, and it says Lounge. Jack, sitting back to camera, typing at table. Camera tracks forward onto him. And then Jack typing. And then Jack back to camera, typing at table in FG, foreground. Wendy enters cam RBG mm -hmm, and walks forward to Jack. And then Wendy says, hi, hen. How's it going? And then Wendy stops cam right of him. Jack pulls page from typewriter. And Jack says, fine. Wendy kisses him. Wendy, get a lot written today? And uh, Jack looks up at Wendy and he says, yes. And he says it just like that, very flat tone of voice. Yes. Um, and then Wendy says, hey, the weather forecast says it's going to snow tonight. And then Jack says, what do you want me to do about it? Again, very flat. Uh, Wendy says, oh, come on, hon. Don't be so grouchy. And then Jack says, I'm not being grouchy. I just want to finish my work. And that that part where he says, I just want to finish my work, is before he um, turns into a raging asshole. Um, this is what, this is, he's gesturing with his hand towards the typewriter. This is the part where he says, I just want to, I just want to finish my work. And then Wendy says, Okay, I understand. I'll come back later with a couple of sandwiches for you, and maybe you'll let me read something then. Mm. Okay. And then, okay, so that's this. This is the sandwich part. She says, you know, okay, yeah, I'll come back later with a couple of sandwiches, and then maybe you'll let me read something then. And she's just so pleased with herself. She th she thinks she's being nice. And I guess she is being nice. Um, but oof. here we go with that. And then his reaction to that, he clears his throat. 
Oh, and you know when somebody clears their throat, they're about to... Mm-mm. mm 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 And he says, Wendy, clear his throat. Let me explain something to you. Whenever you come in here and interrupt me, you're breaking my concentration. Jack hits his forehead with his hand. Okay, let me get to that part. Okay, doot, 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 doot. I think that's where he's clearing his throat. And do 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 do. Oh, look at his concentration. Ooh, look at look at. Ooh, look at him. Look at him. Ooh, yeah, breaking his concentration. There it is, breaking his concentration. Breaking his head with the bat. Later on in the movie, that's what's going to happen. Why is he? Like I said, in the in the in the lobby, when he's messing around with that tennis ball, um. He puts his hand on his head and like, I guess it looks like he's brushing his fingers through his hair or getting his hair out of his face or whatever. And then this here, like same hand, same side of the face, I think. They're, 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 they're foreshadowing that, that baseball bat, um, you know, him being struck by the baseball bat later on in the movie. Okay, so she's breaking his concentration. Jack hits forehead with his hand. You're distracting me. He picks up a sheet of paper and tears it up. Then he throws the pieces down. And it will then take me time to be- get back to where I was. Understand? Okay. And doop, 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 doop. Okay, he tears up the paper here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Why is the paper white? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Didn't I say the paper was yellow? Yes, I did. And why did I say the paper was yellow? Oh, because it was. Hmm. I don't know what to think of this. Wait a minute. Where's the paper? Where's the paper? Okay, you see it? You see it here. It's yellow. And now I don't know if that's just lighting or what, but here it looks pretty darn white. <sighs> Y'all help me with this. Put it in the comments. I don't know. Why does it go from yellow to white? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm. No, that's white. Not even close to yellow. Or beige. Or no, it's white. Or cream cup. No, no, it's not cream color. It's not beige. It's not yellow it's white mm-hmm. i just don't know what to think and there he is like tearing it up like a maniac you know oh look at him look at him look at him Woo. throwing it throw oh throwing 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 oh lord 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 <sighs> okay and that's, you know, he said all that. And he says, um, and it will t- then take me time to get back to where I was. Understand? Question mark. And Wendy says, yes. And the yes we don't see here. Or do we? Is this the yes? Is she moving her mouth? Yeah, I think she's saying yes here. And then we go back to him. And this is right before this last shot of my slide presentation today. Um, this is the last like moment of minute 45 in my copy of the movie. And this is right before he says, fine, now we're going to make a new rule. Whenever I'm in here and you hear me typing, Jack types, typewriter cures, or whether you don't hear me typing, whatever the fuck you hear me doing in here. When I'm in here, that means I am working. That means don't come in. Now, do you think you can handle that? Okay, that's like right before. This shot is right before he says that. And that's where we're going to pick up next time. Okay. Like I said, I pointed out the stuff. I pointed out she shouldn't be shocked by this. I pointed out his... um green shirt, the seven petals on the back of, you know, behind him on this chair. I just pointed out that this paper looks pretty darn white to me. And it started out when it was in the typewriter. It looked yellow. Um, I made special effort to get this 
shot, uh, this screenshot here, so you can see him slapping himself in the head. Um, you know, I talked about these plaid curtains and this odd light that seems to be coming from the window that shouldn't be there if it's nighttime. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I, maybe I'm wrong. Um, I pointed out this chair and table combo being there in one shot and not being there in another shot. Okay. And what else? What else? Ugh. Okay. Oh yeah. Um, mm. am I missing something? Oh, come on. Okay. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm looking through my slides on the sidebar the, over here that you can't see. Oh, yes. I pointed out this scrapbook. I said, pay attention to this scrapbook next to him. Um, the pages, the, the newspaper clippings that you see, they're going to change. Keep an eye on those. If you're going to watch the movie, like between now and the next time I do one of these installments, please keep an eye on these scrapbook, uh, these newspaper clippings. They're going to change. The typewriter... Uh, make a mental note of where this, I don't know what to call is this a cursor or no, but this thing that moves back and forth, left and right, on the um, typewriter is going to be in a different position after Wendy leaves and he resumes typing. Uh, this lamp that's not plugged into nothing, don't make no sense, okay? Don't make no sense. And what else did I point out? Let me go back to the shot of the Colorado Lounge. Okay, wait a minute, let me see something. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, there she is. I pointed out that he waits until the very last second. As you can see, she's, you know, this is in reverse, she's backing away. Um, I pointed out that this is the very last second, she waits until the very last second to pull the paper out of his typewriter, okay? And it looks white here too. So I know this lamp has a yellow shade on it. Maybe that cat, maybe that does a color cast on the paper that he's typing on. Again, I don't know these things. I'm not an expert on any of this. I pointed out the lighting. It's all indirect lighting. These three chandeliers in the middle, not, not switched on. But all these uh, side lights, these sconces with the candle um, things are are lit, and they're reflected in this very heavily polished, very shiny wooden floor. Okay, all of the rugs are where they should be. All of the lamps are where they should be. The bare rug is there. There's no fire in the fireplace. Um, there's the piano. There's always that newspaper on the piano. I don't know why. I really don't. There's these potted plants that never grow, never get dry, nothing. So they're probably fake. Like I said, this paper looks awfully yellow to me. Okay. Awfully yellow to me. And so there's that. Again, this is before Wendy walks in. Um, and we, see, you know, we, we do a quote, we slowly get closer to him typing. Right. And we started off here. Okay. <sighs> There's a lot going on. There is a lot going on. And and you can see the beams on the um, ceiling of the Colorado Lounge. I don't know why, but they're there. They are there. And I mentioned about this hallway, room 237. I mentioned something. Now, hopefully you were watching and hopefully you remembered it. No, I'm not talking about this door. This door is like a no-brainer at this point. It's been pointed out so many times by so many people. It's, it's hardly a, a new discovery. But what I, what I pointed out to you, if you were listening, then you were listening. If you weren't, then you weren't. We see the Grady twins. Like I said, Wendy, Darling, Alice in Wonderland, or Alice through the Looking Glass. I was talking about that with Gershom lately. Y'all, y'all, 2 times 3 times 7 equals 42. And I said I'm going to have to start making notes, and I will. I will have to start making notes. So I'm, I'm almost up to an hour and 30 minutes on this thing. Okay, I think I've done okay. 
So this is our first shot of, of this installment, of this three minute installment. And this is, mm. holy crap. Just thought of something. I just told you two times three times seven. Two times three is six times seven is 42. Okay, and then take 42. Four times two is eight. Yeah, I'm going to talk about both the 237 and it comes to 42. And then you further do that and, and make it into an eight. <sighs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned. I've got a lot more for you. You're going to figure this thing out. We are going to figure this thing out. So now that I'm done. So anyway, this is the first shot of my uh, slide presentation today. And this is the last shot. We will pick up, pick up from this point onward in the next installment, part 16 of Understanding the Shining with, uh, uh, with me, your host, Miss M. So um, thank you. If you if you made it all the way to the end of this movie, you are awesome. Thank you for being here. And um, I'll just reiterate my church announcements. Uh, returning viewers, thank you for returning. New viewers, thank you for, be for being new. Subscribers, thank you for subscribing. And each and every single last one of you, uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I enjoy doing these a great deal. I wish I had more time. wish I had more energy. Um, I'm, I'm doing my best. So everybody, all of you wonderful viewers, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it so much. So, and again, if you have any ideas or if you think I got something wrong, please let me know. Put it in the comments. I'm very happy to know if I got something wrong. I want to know. So, you know, I won't do it again. Um, so until next time people. Until the next time when I find yet another reason to talk at you. It's going to be pretty soon. Got, I got a lot of stuff that I want to do. I'm going to start making notes and we're going to get into it. Um, so until next time when I find yet another reason to talk at you, I'm going to go ahead and bid you. Bye-bye. So bye-bye everybody.